Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to my workshop. This week, I'm getting back to my Dynamite 2800 CNC retrofit. Now, when I first introduced this project, uh, one of the things I mentioned was there might be some sort of problem on the Y-axis. I just suspected uh, that it just didn't feel right when I turned the screw. Uh, so now that we actually have the Acorn board installed, I've got the G251X uh, stepper drives hooked up and the CNC12 software is loaded in the computer, I can go in through the software and incrementally move those motors and it's going to be a lot easier to tell what's going on. Now one of the first things I have to do before I can do any of that though is configure the CNC12 software, let it know exactly how many pulses it takes to move that motor one revolution. Now these motors are standard uh, 1.8 degree per step stepper motors, which means uh, if you take the 1.8 degree per step, uh, divide it into 360 degrees, then you have uh, 200 total steps to make a complete revolution. Now the G251X uh, drives from Gecko, they are micro stepping drives. They further divide each one of those steps into 10 additional micro steps. So if we take those 10 steps, multiply it uh, by the 200 true steps of the motor, uh, then we find that it actually takes 2000 pulses from the CNC12 software to move our motor one revolution. So the next thing we have to address is actually the turns ratio. And this is uh, related to the actual uh, mechanics of the ball screw and the drive mechanism uh, from the outside of the stepper motor. So any sort of uh, gear or belt reduction on the output of the motor feeding the actual ball screw and the threads per inch of the ball screw uh, will give us that ratio. Okay, so we're gonna do my Y minus 0.1 and go, that's 0.1, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9. At that point, we're off by two thousandths. Let's go back to y.95. And then go y negative 0.05. Back to zero. And that takes us back to zero. It is repeatable. So what I could do is fine tune my ratio a little bit. Uh, if I take uh, the, uh, the 0.9 that I was supposed to have moved and divide that by the 0.898 that I actually moved, uh, we end up with this uh, 1002 number. Now if I take that and I go in here to my turns ratio, if I multiply that number by my turns ratio, it's going to cause it to move just a little bit further. So I'll take this times the 25.4, which is already a metric approximation, so we're not, uh, you know, we're not dealing with a, a finite number here. Uh, I come up with 25.456, so we'll say 25.457. Uh, so we'll do that here, and I'll write that. And then I'm going to start the process over here, do our G91, and then we're going to start moving in uh, 0.1 inch increments. And again, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six. Seven point 
eight. <laughs> at point nine. So we're dialed in sort of on the zero at this point. We seem to have probably some wear in the ball screw. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, because it seems to move, uh, you know, a couple increments right on the money, and then out of the blue, we jump. Now, I want to shift gears here just a little bit and see what we actually have for backlash in this system. So I'm going to start uh, dialed in on zero here. I'm going to move it forward 10 and then backwards and see what we get. Okay, so that's moving forward 10. Now let's move it backwards 10. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, two thousandths of backlash in there. So I think we've got some mechanical issues that we need to take care of before we can do uh, really anything with the tuning of this machine. It was at this point that I realized that I had unscrewed 
the ball screw too far and I was going to need to restuff the balls. This is an NSK, looks like 82A-16, 8UZ. All right, let's see how many balls we have. So what have we learned here? Well. We knew that this was a 16 millimeter ball screw, uh, and we, after careful counting, there's actually uh, 116 balls, uh, which actually works out to be a good number because if we look at this ball screw, uh, this ball screw has uh, four separate recirculation points. So as the thread makes its way around the inside of the screw, uh, as it's going around, on the underside of this plastic bit here, it looks like it's nylon probably, uh, as the ball comes around the back side and comes up over here to this part, this thing shoots it back over here to restart in the same thread again. And there's actually four of them. Uh, so actually each, each thread, uh, or each, each circuit of balls around the ball screw only occupies a single thread. So there's, a lot, there's lots of threads in there, but we're only using uh, basically four paths. So the 116 balls basically works out uh, to 29 balls per circuit. And whether that's actually enough or not, I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to try to restuff this and see how it feels after I do it. Um, that's the first plan. The balls themselves are uh, 1.58 millimeters. Uh, so that is the, and, and those are readily available if we decide to go ahead and restuff them. Um, the thing that I'm having actual trouble locating is a ball screw with the 2.5 millimeter pitch. There's lots of ball screws out there with a 5 millimeter pitch, uh, but this is 2.5 millimeters, so it's, uh, you know, twice as fine of a pitch. So we'll have to see, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is, is put it back together. In order to do that, I have to pop these these recirculation, or that's what I call them, recirculation caps, uh, so that I can push the balls in. Because, uh, like I said, there's you know the, the thread is fully or the the nut is fully threaded down the length of this piece, but you're only you're not actually having balls in every single one of those paths. You're just having them in these four separate circuits. In order to do that, you put the you put the ball screw in, and if you pop these caps out, you can push the balls around. And when you see the uh, as you're pushing them around, they'll eventually come up on the other side, and you know you have a complete circuit when they're they're filled all the way. So what I want to do is pop one of these out, and we'll put the 29 balls in and see if they fit and see if there's a, a gap in there or not, and how much of a gap there is.
And of course, this is not standard operating procedure. This is something you probably really aren't supposed to even do. With that said, it's also not the first time I've done it. If we look at this, I don't know if the camera will actually focus on that or not. That shows the recirculation path. Uh, the path starts at the back side of this screw and comes to the front side of the next one. That's two. That's three. Eight and twenty nine. Well, let's put that in there. Okay. All right, I'm going to mark that one just so we know it's done. We'll try another one here. Nine. Just lost one. Oh shoot. Well, my battery died while I was crawling around on the floor looking for that ball bearing, but uh, miracle of all miracles, I actually found it. It's right there. Let's try to be a little more careful here. for good measure so we know we did them and while I got this out let's see what this bore is on this thing well it depends where you measure it's 25 millimeters so if we do have to replace this we're looking for something with a 25 millimeter OD all right so I've gone ahead and I've put the uh, screw back into the housing here. Now there's two uh, bearings in here. These are angular contact bearings. They're in opposite orientations to each other. And they feel a little clunky to me. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, order a new set of bearings for in here. Uh, and then try to determine what sort of preload should actually be put on those. Uh, because really, uh, I can't say I found anything wrong with this screw, so I think that that's the next step we're going to take before putting this back together, because although I took this apart and and I know that it's together correctly, I don't feel like I really found a problem. Uh, I think I know that when I took it apart, the balls were falling out of it, but that was simply because I I ran the nut off the end of the screw too far, um, so that's. That, that's to be expected, but uh, this this nut feels really good um, And I just don't I just don't sense any Any real wear I, I, I don't see anything to indicate that there's a problem here 
Well, that's about it for this week. It looks like I'm going to have to order some parts to continue on with this project. Uh, after spending this amount of time on it, I really want it to be right and not uh, fudge it. So we're going to order those uh, angular contact bearings for the uh, input of the ball screw. In the meantime, I'm going to look around and see uh, what my options are for actually replacing the ball screw. There's uh, plenty of 16 millimeter screws out there. Uh, having trouble though actually finding one with the uh, fine pitch that this uh, ball screw currently has. And as always, if you like seeing projects like this, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll catch you next week.